Yankees, taking root in New Orleans and going by the moniker of the Black Hand. At the same time the Black Hand began its operations in America, the Five Points Gang, led by Paul Kelly, also known as Paolo Vaccarelli, and the 107th Street Gang, led by Giuseppe Morello, began inroads into American organized crime. While the Black Hand would die out, Giuseppe Morello would take the formation of an American mob family into the 1930s. As Morello would battle it out for turf and territory, he would eventually give way to Joe Masseria. As Masseria took over control, Salvatore Maranzano would be sent from Italy on behalf of Don Vito Cacciaferro to exploit the mob's control in America. Maranzano would establish his base of operations in Brooklyn, New York, with eyes on controlling the entirety of the Mafia in New York City and the United States. Masseria didn't look too kindly on anyone claiming New York City as their own. As tensions grew, two sides would form. Those who sided with Salvatore Maranzano and those who sided with Joe Masseria. February 26th of 1930, Joe Masseria fired the first shot in what would be known as the Castamorese War by killing Tommy Reyna. War had begun. Dozens over the next year would be killed, but there was one man from Naples who eyes the underworld very differently. He is a visionary. He is the antithesis of what the Mafia could be what the Mafia should be, and what the Mafia will be. He will forever change the landscape of organized crime in America. What's going on, everybody? Sorry, I got to send a text really quick. I just sent you the link to my guy in Philly. All right, anyway, uh, let me, if you guys can hear me, can you press one, please? Just press one so I know you guys can hear what I'm saying. Gunsmoke, the motherfucking Don is in the house. Dustin, what's shaking? I hope you guys can hear me. Okay, I see you once. I'm going to go to the top, say hello to Frank. Miss Can't Be Wrong, how are you? Chardonnay, my pal from South Philadelphia, West Texas Burrito. Uh, Who else we got in the house? Uh, We've got 35. (laughs) We're going to break all kinds of records tonight. (laughs) Uh, Jeff Tilly, how are you? Rick the Tank, how are you? Uh, Don Vito Cachefero, Mikey Beef, Gunsmoke the Don. Uh oh hey Marco, how are you? I didn't know what the hell your uh, thing was. Lisa Farrow, how are you? Uh Nana PhD. Uh let me just go down to the bottom because I'll Robert, how are you? Lisa, I said hello to you. Jesse Roth, the one and only Jesse Roth. Um all right, so anyway, uh we've only got 34 people in here. I kind of expected this because there's been uh a little bit of backlash against me, I guess, because I just don't follow trends or whatever. And maybe people think it's for members only, but it's not. So if I only end up with 40 in here, I don't give a fuck at the end of the day. Um, I, the, the first of all, let me explain this. So the, uh, when you go to the YouTube page and you see the join button, what that join button is, is for our documentaries, and a lot of other stuff that we're releasing behind the scenes. We've released pictures I don't think anybody has ever seen before uh, that were public pictures of mine, of some people you might recognize um, that we put on the members page. And basically, we're going to debut all of our documentaries on the members only site uh, because I'm just not going to put it out, you know, kind of publicly so people could just take it and do what they want with it. So that's what the members only site is for. Today, we released. The uh, Genovese Crime Family Volume 1 through 6, that is from beginning to end the whole entire history of the Genovese Crime Family. It's over six and a half hours, six episodes. Uh, We're going to release probably all the five families, which we completed uh, over on the podcast that I do. Uh, If you're looking for 
the link to that it is mob talk radio show dot supercast dot com we are an award winning podcast not many people could say that uh we definitely uh we placed in uh second place out of five thousand different people and we got a big cash prize which enabled me to to buy a bunch of stuff but yeah we are award winning um so really the, the purpose of coming on is we are going to start doing members only chats, but I, I got to wait till we have at least 20 people because then it's like, you know, talking to five people might get a little fucking morose. You know what I mean? So uh, we are going to start doing members only chats, but I'm still going to do the live chat stuff once in a while. Uh, we would probably have more people in here if I had uh, sort of promoted this a little bit, but. Uh, with this day and age, some of the things that are going on, um, you know, uh, Dustin Rhodes, where did you order the pizza you post from? Uh, Steve Buscemi owns a pizza place right down the street from me. So that's where I get my pizza from in Manhattan. Yep. He owns a part of it. He's him and Jeff Daniels. There's a couple of celebrities that own the place. It's really good. Best pizza in the world. What's up? Pound in the pink veal. All right, so we're probably not going to push any more than like 40 or 50 today, which I kind of expected. Um, as far as the pink elephant in the room, here's the deal, guys. I'm really not going to say nothing about it unless somebody asks me. If somebody asks me my two cents, I'll give you my two cents on it. Uh, but I'm not going to just talk about it to talk about it. This is kind of open up uh, to whatever you guys want to talk about. I'm going to probably stay on till like 8.45, 9 o'clock tonight. And then the next time we do a live, you know, I'll promote it a week beforehand. That way you guys know what's going on. But as far as, um, you know, the pink elephant, like I said, if nobody asks, I'm not going to bring it up. Uh, you know, I'm listening from the dish room at the restaurant. Well, that's cool. Boy, what guy? That's fantastic. Steve Buscemi is a very interesting person. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So we've got <laughs> a 45. This is the lowest number I've ever had in my chat at all ever ever i don't know if anybody else is on or not uh but i think you know uh so the title of my show uh is i'm a firm believer you got to punch somebody in the mouth first don't let them punch you you got to punch them first uh that's really sort of a a uh, a tongue-in-cheek kind of uh title to have so when a clown moves into a palace he doesn't become a king the palace becomes a circus and that's what youtube has become a circus certifiably a fucking circus do us a favor these are our friends please subscribe to the smith's haunted ghost tube fat balls a million a million <laughs> fat Balt sicilian gun smoke the don my buddy tyler nolan who does great tattoos and the grim life collective if you are interested in seeing like haunted cemeteries and stuff like that they do some great stuff uh, also the genovese crime family history is now on youtube on our channel if you're interested in that go to that also, if you want to read about the mob from a street perspective, actually factual things, uh, then please go to mtrchronicles.com. All right, let's see what we've got going on in the chat. Randy Tippett, what's shaking? Uh, let's see. All right, now I'm seeing ones again. Way down. Oh, I need an assistant to just scroll down through these comments. Uh, I need to figure out how to set the membership on my other account. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's okay. It's quality tonight. Night. No, absolutely. Like I, you know, um, I really didn't come in here with the, uh, with a plan to be honest with you. Um, it was the pizza expensive $32 for a large pizza. That's New York prices for you. $32. <laughs> That's $32. That's like, that's like four Domino's pizzas anywhere else. You know what I mean? 32 fucking dollars. <laughs> you know what? It's nice. So it's cute. They write my name on the box. So I always may always make up a nickname. <laughs> so they'll knock on my door and go, Jeffries, it's you. Well, yeah, I told you my address, you fuck. But uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, so the post time podcast is, is sort of on a break. And here's the reason why uh, Boston Andy is getting ready to sell his house and do a bunch of stuff. So we had to take a break. Uh, and I got to be honest, uh, there's been a lot of people attacking him uh, because of this shit that's going on on YouTube. And, um, I, you know, I, I don't really want to get into all of that, but this is what I would fear a feared would happen. Uh, 
And this all started like in the last week and a half since I was on Fat Bolt Sicilian show. So it doesn't shock me they did this. Uh, but this is a guy who doesn't have anything to do with this. He's my friend. Uh, you have no right to attack him or to harass him or his family. But that's what you fuckers do because you guys are all fucking punks. That's just that's just that's that's it. That's the bottom of it. So I'm waiting for him to finish his house stuff. Um, and then we'll go from there. Uh, mob tube is the parking space for my mental illness. Yeah, it can be. That's a lot of subs for a pizza. Yeah, yeah. Thirty two dollars. Couldn't believe it. But you know what? When you but that's including a 15% tip, 20% tip too. So I mean it's like, you know, um it, it just depends. I mean, Christ, if you wanted to if you wanted to argue if you wanted to order Kentucky fried chicken, like 10 pieces, it's like thirty two dollars, thirty four dollars. It's ridiculous. But I could go right down to the bodega and get a sandwich if I wanted to. I'm just too fucking lazy to go out. Because once it gets to be like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock around here, unless you need to get them cigarettes, you don't go out to the block because they're shooting on the block. So two guys got murdered last week. As soon as it gets warm, they start popping caps in everybody's ass. You know, that's just what they do. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me go through the chat really quick. I am not a punk. Well, if you're a troll, then you are a punk. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I don't like trolls. I never have. I don't think it takes any sort of talent to like threaten somebody with a fake name. Like my my whole thing is just about uh, do doing the right thing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Anybody who attacks Boston is a waste of life. Well, and that's the thing, right? Um, the guy didn't do nothing to nobody, but because they don't like me or because they think I feel a kind of way about something, they're just going to attack him. And it's funny. It's funny. And you can always tell what section that troll neighborhood is coming from because they tell you they'll they'll drop their content creator's favorites name. You better stop messing with. And I'm giving an example. You better stop messing with FBS or else. So it tells you what section of the neighborhood they're coming from. You know, and that's just. It's, it's it's repulsive. I've been dealing with it for eight years. It's nothing new, you know, but I, I, I don't really have a whole lot of respect for trolls. I got to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've all so we've got 57 in here. Everybody's pretty much behaved thus far. Um, I had a pizza from Melody in Brooklyn to Deerfield Beach cost me. Yeah. Yep. It's it's expensive. It's very expensive. Well, New York is expensive in general. You know what I mean? Like you go to the Midwest, you buy steak or pork chops or whatever. It's cheap here. It's like fucking ridiculous. It's especially during the, uh, when COVID hit, they jacked up the price on fucking everything. I mean, I went from spending like, you know, 400 a month, 500 a month in food to like almost double that. Not that I'm eating like crazy. Not that I'm like 600 pounds. And it's just that everything just got very expensive. You know, and there's no such thing as Walmart here for all you people that live outside of, of New York. There's not a Walmart here. So I can't drive to Walmart and get nothing cheap. You know what I mean? Are you going to go on Lee's show? No, probably not. That's a one-time thing. Um, but probably not. Uh, probably not going to make that a repeated thing. I went on there to uh, basically address that I had nothing to do with the the, the stuff that was going on because everybody was blaming me and I had nothing to do with it. I, I listen and, and let me just say it this way. If, if I knew how to do stuff like that, don't you think I would have done this shit like 10 years ago when I was the only person on YouTube doing this? Like I would have done this 10 years ago. Um, but no, I, I had nothing to do with it. And that's the only reason why I went on Lee's show was to just sort of explain that I had nothing to do with it, but no, I don't, I don't plan on going uh, on his show at all. Uh, the people that threaten crap are fanooks in the end. Well, yeah. Yes, I did. I did. I definitely did. Luigi's Pizza and Park Slow. Yeah, they do. I've eaten there. Uh, wow, everybody's talking about pizza. Nothing is cheap. Nothing is cheap. I remember like a six pack of pork chops went from like $4.30 to like $16. And and there's nothing you could do to stop them from raising the prices. It's inflation, but there's nothing you, you nothing you could do. 
Uh, thoughts about the feds, the pricks, uh, Peter Pantuccio. Um, first of all, his name isn't Peter Pantuccio. Second of all, he's not an associate of anything. Third of all, he's in prison. He's going to do 10 years. I'm not barking at you, John. I'm just barking at people that try to make a mountain out of a fucking molehill. He's a stupid, goofy kid, got caught doing a bunch of dumbass shit. He's going to pay for it. Uh, but they, they'll make a, they'll make him John, the next John Gotti. And that's a lot of that is because Panisi, that lying rat can't, you know, he has to make up stories. Uh, Panisi's whole life story is a fucking joke and, and a lie. You know what I mean? So, um, but you know, you got to look at Tuccio's sentence. You got 10 years for something that falls under the category. And I have the, the federal sentencing guidelines right here next to me. Uh, that's a two to four. That's a two to four. So it's it, it's ten. That's crazy for arson. Crazy. I am responsible for the Kennedy assassination. I am. I was in the grassy knoll. I, I don't. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, what new book is that? Is that the one by uh, Scott Deitch? I, I how would I know? I have no idea. Uh, my wife hates Walmart. Okay. Uh, let's see the Godfather 4K. I you know I haven't watched any of that. You can't just tell it the truth now. No, and see, that's the, you know what? That's a really good point. Well, and I think the second half of your sentence uh, is probably closer to the truth of why he got 10 years. I mean, let's just be realistic. Most guys, when they get arrested, most guys aren't on, on social media to begin with, right? But secondary to that, most of them don't post photos with the who's who of who, okay? Past that, when people get GPS monitors, they don't take photos of that and brag. Like that's stupidity. Uh, it's my belief that had he um, just not done that, he probably would have gotten you know four four years if that. But now he's going to do ten. If you look at the two people that that were involved in this allegedly with him, they only got like two years. They got they got nothing. They got nothing. He got he just got nailed, absolutely nailed. And unfortunately, guys like Panisi invent stories that don't help it. And then of course everybody else picks up on it because for some reason they, they refuse to like believe for one second that, that John Panisi tells the truth about anything. I, I don't get it. I really don't understand it. I love the Godfather movies too. Uh, let's see. Did Tommy Peter and Roy DeMeo know one another? I answered this on Friday. I answered it. I answered it. Oh God, let's not talk hockey. Oh, I wouldn't read it. I'm not listen. And, and let me say it this way: I'm not interested in anything John Gotti anymore. Uh, and a lot of that is just because uh, I've, I mean, that's all you seem to read about, right? And what's what's going to be different? What's going to be different about this book that hasn't been regurgitated ten thousand times? You know, the guy had a five year run. He wasn't Al Capone. He had a five year run. There's like twenty five other guys I can name that had thirty year runs or 20 plus year run. So, you know, it may be a good book. I didn't hear about it, but I mean, it's just going to be the same stuff over and over and over and over and over again. I knew Panisi was full of shit when he said Joey Merlino was sending. Yeah. DMs to Tuccio. Well, so now nah, I say I should be quiet here. It, it Listen, in the grand scheme of things, it's not unusual for Joey to text and talk to people. I mean, he did it with me. So that's like nothing new. Um, we talked that way for a long time, but um, I don't, you got to understand one thing about, about Joey that, that I will say is he's smarter than the average bear. Uh, and this is a guy that's not going to have any in, in, inappropriate conversations with anybody. Say, so, Hey, how's your family? How's your, how's your kids? How's this? How's that? Everything good. That that's, that's more probably closer to what the reality of that was, but how would Panisi even know that anyway? You know what I mean? I think the bigger lie that Panisi tells is when he tells everybody he was down in South Philadelphia and in Jersey meeting with the hierarchy. I can tell you for a fact that's not true. None of these guys even know who this guy was until he got arrested. So 
Um, Panisi is nuts. Yep, he is. Because he's a rat. That's my answer right there. Because he's a rat. Rats do not tell the truth about anything. That's why his whole life story is a lie. Secondary to that, they weren't even going to make him because they thought he was schizophrenic. And he was like that his whole entire life. Uh, he beat women. So, therefore, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, he's a piece of shit. Will you please define a rat in reality? Anybody that testifies against anybody in a court of law to get themselves out of jail or get themselves out of trouble is a fucking rat. Anybody on YouTube? Anybody on YouTube? Um, I don't think rat really apply, uh, applies to people on YouTube because you got to be a man first. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not being a dick to anybody or talking about anybody, but you got to be a man first. Um, I, I think that if if you're the type of person that wants to make videos and make threats and then somebody threatens you and you call the police, that makes you a rat. But what do I know? I'm not involved in any of that. But I, I just think that I think a lot of people uh, talk talk good game. But then when people start talking back, they want to like run and dial the police. Like, don't get it. Just I don't understand any of this YouTube stuff. I really don't understand it. Um, I just think I think there's a difference between like defending your family if you've got to, you know, I understand that. But I mean, is really anything on YouTube that severe? I don't know. You know, luckily, uh, I handle things a little bit differently than other people. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, that's right before he sold it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Uncle, N uh, let's see. Jeff Tilly, his uncle Nino Gaji was a beast. Yeah, Nino was a beast. Total beast. <laughs> I just don't take a lot of stocks in what informants have to say. And here's my reasoning why. Doesn't matter. I can feel however I want to feel about it. You guys can can sort of make up your own kind of mind. But if somebody, uh let's say he's in the streets and let's say that that person gets up on a Wednesday morning and says, you know what? I'm done with this shit. I'm going to go tell them everything I did, take a pinch like a man. And that's the end of it. I would have a lot more respect, but that seems to be kind of the way it doesn't go down. Usually it's, they get a ton of time and they start ratting on everybody immediately. If they did it the other way, I'd respect it a whole lot more, but there's never a, you know, they, a lot of these guys, too, like Bobby Luisi likes to use God as his reference. And he always says, well, I didn't rat on my friends. Well, that's because he didn't have any information on anybody. If he had had information on guys in South Philadelphia, believe me, he would have spilled everything. He would have. He would have. Um, but, you know, they got to do what they got to do. That's just uh, I think everybody has the right to, to their own opinion on it. I, I just particularly think that um, I think that anybody who just starts telling on people i mean to get out of a jail sentence i mean what do you say to that there's no excuse for that no i i i really don't i think a lot of you guys think i'm involved in all this youtube boring that goes on and i'm i'm honest to god not involved in in really any of it i know what's going on don't get me wrong uh, but I'm not involved in it. I'm way too busy, you know, doing my own kind of thing. That doesn't mean that I don't have friends that are involved, but I, I really don't. Uh... Well, he can act that way, but I bet you he won't go there. <laughs> Jane Creek, I would call my cops if I believe my life was in danger, but I also don't go around making threats and acting tough. I'm also not a criminal and never been one. Well, like I said, I, I think. <sighs> I, I think there's a lot of people and I'm not being specific, but I think there's a lot of people who use that word, but a lot of the people that say that stuff, I think are, are wannabes. And I think it's, it's, Oh, he's a rat. This one's a rat. That one's a rat. But I mean, in reality, this is YouTube, right? So, and, and I think Jane raises a great point. You're not a criminal. You've never been in trouble before. And if somebody threatens to hurt your family, you're going to do what you got to do. I'm, there is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with defending yourself. You know, uh, if you think both guys stand on the street, that Anthony Spiro would have made Tommy Patera his successor. Uh, ooh, that's a good one. I don't know if Tony Ducks would have allowed that. Or not Tony Ducks. Why the fuck did I say Tony Ducks? Wow, I'm having brain farts this evening. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question, Harry. I, I'm not really sure. 
and I know who you are, and I know why you're asking that, but um, I am a new follower. Nice, uh, nice photo. You should get a new photo. Why do people do that? Why do people put gangsters as their like photos? I don't understand that. Uh, I remember the show of uh, 2014, I believe, or 2015. Yeah, I. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I was the first one to do it. First one to come along. The first one to take on the rats all by myself. I didn't have any help. Didn't have any support. Uh, and I did it for seven years straight and never stopped. Nowadays, I don't need to do it. There's like a hundred people doing it. But they're just, um, you know, everybody's got to do their own kind of thing. You know, I think there's uh, a lot of shows that have some relevance and and um, and do some good stuff. You know, no, he's a made guy. Why would I interview Tommy Gambino? Listen, for those that are new to my show, I don't talk about anything current. That's number one. Number two, uh, if you're going to ask me questions that are current, I'm not going to talk about it. It's just. That's that's my rule, and I don't interview rats, and I don't talk to rats. Yeah, he has. He has. He's been down uh, in Florida. He's down in Florida, from what I understand. Uh, mob tube genres, 15 minutes are about up. If all you're going to do is yell and scream at each other with no content, and it's over. No, I, I think that that's a legitimate thing to say, too. I think if 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 that's the bulk of, of what you do, then you won't get very far. But I'll also say this, too. But if you also don't know what the fuck you're talking about, you're not going to last either. And then that's just the truth. Listen, there's a difference between I could sit here and, and uh, grab a sheet of paper and riddle off to all of you, like a thousand pages of facts. That's boring. That's boring. Who wants to hear that? But if you have no character, or you have no entertainment value, then you're going to fail anyway. You know? Um, and I think that the people that can do this and they're really good at what they do are entertaining. They're not bland. They're not boring. You know, they're not soft. You know, so I mean, it, it's I, I so I agree that the 15 minutes are about up. I can agree with that. I can also agree that people that are pretending to be mob genre people or pretending to know what they're talking about or know what they're doing, that's not going to last either. You know, this is not easy work. This is not I mean, what I do is hard. This is not like I just get on here and, and make up a fucking show. It's, it's not that simple, but a lot of people just phone it in. You can't you, you can't do that. You really got to work hard. Uh, I can't wait for the Gravano documentary. When do you think I expect it to drop? That's what we're trying to figure out now. I got a couple of more things to add to it. Uh, somebody was just asking me about that literally before I came on. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I got to figure out how we're going to people that are on the membership are going to see it first, but there's a couple of platforms that are interested in it. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to do that. And there's also some content creators that are going to be in it. So I've got to do interviews with them. So there's a couple of things left. It, it doesn't, um, I, I, I wish to God it was like an easy thing to do, but it's just not. Uh, let's see. Do I like any other shows on YouTube or podcasts? Uh, I, I watch all kinds of different stuff. Typically, uh, on YouTube, I watch like a lot of nature crap. Uh, I don't watch any of the mob genre stuff except for FBS and Gunsmoke the Dawn. Uh, those are about the only two guys I really watch. Um, but past all of that, I, I don't, um, I don't watch any mafia genre stuff at all. I'm the best that there is that, that, that does this. So, you know, it's not an ego thing. It's just reality. Is Joy for, oh, I'm all right, Joy. I've been meaning to get a hold of you, but um, there's some there's some static that I don't want to drag you into and just other stuff, just other stuff. No, I think he was a piece of shit lunatic. Uh, let's see. Hey, John, how are you doing, buddy? Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I don't know what you're laughing at. Oh, I don't know what you're laughing at. Gunsmoke the Don. I have no idea. You're a troublemaker, Gunsmoke. Um, nah, you know, listen, I don't. Yeah, I do. I, I think he gets a lot of information wrong. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. He gets a lot of information wrong. Um, he. 
tends to cover what the rats say is fact and it's not fact. And the thing is, is you cannot read a book and, and really digest the 360 degrees of a story. So if you read a book and then you get a pacer account, you get court files, then you can at least say, okay, here's, here's side a of the fucking story here's side B. And then you let your audience decide you can have an opinion about it. Uh, but I think anybody that just reads a book, it's not, it, it it's, you're knowing something, you're understanding it, but you're also uh, sort of learning a, an author's narrative. Uh, there's more to it. I mean, and I'll give you a good example of this. If I read every book on John Gotti, then I would only have a one way to look at him. But I've read books, but I also have paperwork, documents, files that show kind of another side of the coin. And I think that's the only way you can do it uh, to be fair, um, you know, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't know who the guy is. Like I said, a lot of people think I'm all over this YouTube stuff and all, and all over the, the mob genre stuff, and I'm really not. I'm really not. I'm, I'm only vested uh, when I hear something that, is just unequivocally wrong. I heard something today that was incredibly wrong, uh, but I'm not going to address that. It's just not, it's just not worth it. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know why I was probably moving the mic. Apologize for that. Hey, Gunsmoke, can you believe it? I've almost got, over a half an hour into the show and nobody said a word. Did you ever hear of a New Jersey restaurant called the steak pit in the sixties and seventies? Uh, no, I've never heard of that place. Believe it or not. Never have, but I might know somebody who, who would, but I'll have to check into that. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, I, I don't know if it's so much that is it's I just think he knows the basics. Uh, but what he does is good because he gets a ton of views. So he, he must I, I think the 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 reason why what he does is good is he just gives you the A, B, C, D, and E of it, and he makes it quick and to the point because nobody wants to sit there for an hour and listen, and I get it. But I just think that if you're gonna do this, um then you know uh I think you oh she's I think black hand print mafia is a joke. A hundred percent he's a joke. Uh he has repeatedly said things that are not even remotely accurate. Uh and it is what it is. I'm not a fan of his at all. I like OC shorts a lot better than I like black hand print, but I don't like black hand print mafia at all. Not at all. I, I don't think he knows what he's doing. Okay, there's question number one. I knew this would come, and I knew that there's going to be another one. Uh, hold on, let me answer this really quick. Uh, no, we're going to do live shows once a month or twice a month. Yeah, I know, Chardonnay. I'm watching very close. Trust me. I'm not stupid. I, I'm very aware of what's going on right now. What, I'm right on top of it. Um, no, we're going to do it once or twice a month, and then we're going to do stuff that's just specific for... Uh, members only. All right. Have you tried to figure out why Angel is still rocking with this guy? Nope. And I don't care. Uh, it, it's as simple as that. Um, that's um, let me answer it this way. Who I like, who I don't like. It is what it is. It, whatever my opinion is, shouldn't, shouldn't um, affect anybody else. Cause it's, 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 uh, it's my opinion. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I know Chardonnay. I, I, you, people are texting me. You can hear it. Yeah, I know. I, I just wanted to address this. Um, I don't know. Everybody makes a choice. Everybody makes a decision. Uh, not everybody that I like people will like, and it, it's as simple as that. I'm not, uh, you know, it, it's as simple as that. Everybody makes a choice. All right. Uh, let's see. Have you ever watched a show wise guy from I've, you know what? I've seen some, I've seen some interesting, uh, I think I've seen a couple of episodes of that, but I mean, don't, don't, uh, don't, um, quote me on anything. Uh, black hand. Well, he could be a good kid all day long. It doesn't mean he knows what he's doing. Listen, this is a kid that said the patriarchal crime family doesn't exist. This is a kid that said South Philadelphia doesn't have a mafia. Now, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. He said, well, I can't find any proof online. That tells me how dumb he is. I'm just being honest. What are they going to? 
Are they going to draw a uh, are they going to draw a a map? Are they going to do a, a members list? Like it just be realistic. And obviously he doesn't know anybody in the streets, never been in the streets. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't say something as stupid as that. As you shouldn't. That's her business. I have no idea what that's all about. So are you trying to get smart with me? Is that is that what that, that comment's about? As you shouldn't. That You know what? You can get out of here. I don't even need that kind of nonsense. Goodbye. Take your trash to that channel if that's what you want to do. No, I don't have to appease anybody. I just, I kind of tell it how I like it. And if people like it, then they can like it or not. Absolutely, Miss Can't Be Wrong. Absolutely. If if somebody wants to like somebody, then that's their business. That has no, you know why it has no effect on my life? Because neither one of those persons are in my life, nor will they ever be in my life again. So that's, that's the whole, um, that's, that's the whole thing. Adults can do what they want. Um, but I, I'm just not going to feed into it. They need to start a Facebook page or they don't exist. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Yeah, hey, Mafia, if I Google, Google Mafia online, yeah. Have you ever seen the offer, I can't watch it, Giovanni Rabisi is making a mockery of Joe Colombo, the corny voice. No, I won't watch it because I know, I know they won't get the story right, and I'm a big history buff when it comes to that. So, you know. I uh, I just I like Giovanni uh, Ribisi as an actor, but I just I know that they're not going to do that right. I know that they're going to. It's kind of like that. Um, what's that fucking The Godfather of Harlem? Do you guys really think that Bumpy Johnson would have went to war with with Vincent Gigante and told him what to do, and he would have been subservient? Like, get the fuck out of here! Come on, and that's not a black white issue. That's just a historical thing. Like, there's just no way. No, I don't. No, I don't. I do not. Well, from the way you ride a motorcycle, I'm surprised you don't have a dildo in your ass. Looks like you do. The only clowns you support are racist ones, pal. So keep it moving. Jerk off. What a jerk off. Oh, you support these people, so blah, blah, blah. I can like whoever I want. I can like whoever I want. Why did you come here then? Jerk off. Oh. Let's see. Oh. Well, I listen, I know I don't I don't know. Uh they're absolutely not getting it right. And I like Rabisi too, just not as Columbo. I never watched that Bumpy Johnson show garbage. Yeah, no, I don't understand. I don't understand for the life of me why they just don't. And I'm not saying me, so please don't take it this way, Gianni. But why don't they go out and get people like that do this for a living who know the history of it and sit down and just pick their brain? Instead, I I don't know if they send these actors to do like Wikipedia searches or, or what they do. But it's like the the guy that FBS had on a show the other day. I can't remember his last name is Piazza. Is, am I getting that right? He like did a lot of research. That's what a lot of actors do. Um, but I don't understand why these writers, like if you're going to write something that is historically accurate, like you would think they would try to at least get some semblance of it right. And, and oftentimes they don't. Um, let's see. Oh, Johnny the Greek. Yeah, well, there you go. Thanks for dropping the Genovese crime family. Uh, I miss listening to you, but I'm a cheap bastard. No, it's all right. I understand. Some people don't want to pay for it, but you know, that's how I make my living. You know what I mean? I don't come on here and, you know, get super chats or ask for that kind of stuff. You know, it's just kind of not my thing. That's how I, um, it's how I make my living. So, you know, uh, we're going to drop some stuff off the, the radio show just to, to sort of, um, you know, bring people on board a little bit, so to speak. 
most historically based shows and movies take liberties even the better made ones like hbo rome made, yeah rome rome you know here's the thing i loved rome jane i loved rome i loved watching rome but it was historically like inaccurate but i could still enjoy it um you're not going to learn proper history from movies and tv shows no you're not no you're not that's absolutely true um tv shows and films pursue a narrative that suits them they don't care about facts or history no they don't they don't even the sopranos historically was inaccurate big time uh i think it was the closest thing that you're ever going to get to that life but here's the thing you you got a crew that's operating in in north jersey why did they take the sopranos and go to providence why didn't they go to their neighbor like 20 minutes away in philly that to me would have been a little more, and I understand the narrative of David Chase and what he was trying to do, but you imagine the, 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 the character arcs and the stories you could have had, if that would have included Philadelphia at some point, that would have been fantastic. You'd have had every chooch in Philadelphia lining up to be in that show too. Uh, okay. Yes, it's still open. I've been there. Yeah, it's fantastic. So let me make another stand. Let me uh, let, let me let me let me make another sort of stance. Um, just because I like somebody is, you know, kind of my choice. Uh, whether or not you like them is your choice. Doesn't matter who likes who. Uh, I think too many people are making decisions not based in fact, but based on emotion and feeling. And I think that's a bad decision to make. You know what I mean? All right, let's get rid of this guy. He's obviously uh, an angel fucking supporter and an angel troll. That doesn't shock me. Uh, let's see. That's amazing. It's amazing to me. Sopranos in Boston or Philly or Springfield. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't understand why they didn't take advantage of that. Instead, they go to Providence and they get like two 80 year old guys. Like, what the fuck? I didn't, they, I think that they had a real opportunity to make something really cool out of that, but maybe that's just kind of, you know, weren't the feds feeding the Sopranos scriptwriters tapes, though? Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. And also, if you're a troll from Angel's channel, and you don't want me going in her channel saying the filthy things you're saying in here, then I suggest you stop because I'm not going to tolerate it. Go fuck around on her channel. I don't need you in mine. I've been at this. I got 15,000 subs. I don't need your bullshit. Uh, you can make a great movie about Philly. Yeah. Anything other than that, that fucking abortion that came out. Uh, you know, they may, they may. I've always said that if that was the film you're going to make in Philadelphia, that's the one you make. That's the one you make, you know, but I don't know. It just depends. Uh, New England mob is untapped gold. I don't know why they haven't done anything to go with it. No, I don't need, I don't understand either. Like, I really don't understand. Like when they were doing the Irishman, why did they, why didn't they, they didn't include the patriarch in the sixties. I mean, Ray patriarch was on the fucking commission. Why was he not? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing that the Irishman really, I think, got wrong is they really should have went into the whole Kennedy thing, the Hoffa thing. They should have gone like really deep into that. And they, for whatever reason, they chose not to. And I, I just don't understand that for the life of me. Yeah, that's another troll. Just delete, just delete the people that come in here. Like I said, it, you get hated because you have friends. It's amazing because that never happened when, you know, people thought I was on one side of the fence, but it happens after they think you're not. And I haven't even really spoken vocally about any of this, but I will say this. You ready? If it barks like a dog, it looks like a dog. Then it is a dog. Pictures don't lie. End of story. And, and that's all there is to it. It's not my problem. It's not my problem, nor do I give a shit about anybody that gets affected by it, nor do I give a shit about the situation. It has no bearing on my life. It's not going to change my life to stand up and wave flags and scream. I've done that my whole life. I don't need to do it anymore. I don't. Uh, 
<sighs> Didn't they make a movie about Ted Kennedy that lasted 24 hours in the theaters before it disappeared? Now, I saw that one. I actually got early se seats to that one. It was called Chappaquiddick. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was a great movie. But yeah, you're right. It didn't it didn't last very long. And Kennedy's pulled that. You know what I mean? They pulled that, but it was a fantastic movie. No, you know, you know where I you know, listen, you know where I stand. You know how I feel about it. Uh I support people that support me. Uh and that's just the end of it. Uh photo says a million words. That's it. But at the end of the day, it's not my problem. I don't live my life that way. I don't believe in things like that. Um, you know, but to each their own, to each their own. Uh, I'm not going to dog somebody on my show. I'm not going to like call somebody out because let, let me explain something that, that I don't think some people understand. I don't have to speak out against it because I don't need anybody to like me. I don't have to speak for it because I don't need anybody to like me. I'm the OG of this shit. And it doesn't matter. But I think sometimes people want to come to me and ask my opinion. Now, there's people behind the scenes that know what my opinion is. And I've been a lot more frank with them than I will be here. Uh, but I think it just comes down to I'm 44 years old. I run a business. I, I just, no matter what my belief is, I'm not going to change what's going on. But how does that, like, do I think it's disgusting 100%? But does does it affect my life? No. And the answer is it. uh Oh, look, a threat email. Imagine that. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't affect my life like that. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Uh, people that are disgusted by it are going to be disgusted by it. People that are fooled by it are going to be fooled by it. And that's OK. You can't you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. You know what I'm saying? So you just it is what it is. Black ham print is bad. He thinks he's some kind of intellectual. He's dumb and doesn't get it. But for me, I just can't. Scott's this. Well, yeah, I, I agree with you, Susan. I think he does things. He he's intellectual. I think he is a smart guy. Okay. Uh, but I just don't think he understands the streets. There's a difference between reading it in a book versus being around it your whole entire life. Okay. I grew up inside of an organized crime family. My relatives were all involved in it. Uh, my cousin was involved in it very much. So I had another cousin that got killed. that was in it. Uh, so I grew up around it. Okay. Uh, I have friends that are involved. Uh, so I sort of see it from a different perspective. Uh, as far as Scott Bernstein goes, uh, you know, Scott Bernstein ought to, you know, stick to African American gangs. That's what he knows very well. He doesn't know the mob very well, but he understands, you know, the gang, the gang stuff very well. That I'll give him. Uh, but it is what it is. You have great content in Philly, especially with that nutbag Nikki Scarfo. Yeah, Nikki was something else. Nikki was something else. So it's funny, Miss Can't Be Wrong, you said this because I was actually going to start the Kennedys. I got a big Kennedy show. It's going to be a 20-parter. We're talking three hours, 20 episodes. That's how big it's going to be. But the whole thing about it, this is this is exactly why I wanted to get to this. This is you start research, researching the Kennedy stuff, you can really go down a rabbit hole. It's interesting. That's the problem with the show is that I have to take out parts where I don't want to go on a rabbit trail. I got to keep it just on the organized crime aspects of it, but there's so much that I could literally probably for six months straight every day do a show about them, but I'm trying to get, I want to be able to like with like we did all five families on the podcast from beginning to end from inception to about the two thousands or whatever, every, all the five crime families we've done. Okay. The Genovese's were just uh, released on YouTube. The problem is I try to keep you right in sort of the, 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 what do they call that in the zone of organized crime. And I listen, when I do these things, I don't talk about just like John Gotti. I'm talking about all the players, all the major people, the politics behind the scenes. That's one thing that I really enjoy talking about. So with the Kennedys, it's such a pain in the ass because there's so much that I just have to really dumb it down a little bit uh to 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 make it easier not for you guys but for me to be honest with you uh no one in this genre can hold a well you know listen i'm sure there's people that could do this better than me uh but i have a panache they don't have panache would you uh 
what would you consider the most historically accurate organized crime TV show or movie? Um, wow, that's a great question, Jane. I think Goodfellas. Okay, listen, uh, for the for the purists, they're going to say, oh, look, listen to what he just said, because, you know, Henry Hill's a lying sack of shit. From the violence aspect of it, you're never going to get a better mob mob movie. That is like straight out of uh, even Mean Streets, too. Mean Streets was like that. Very, the dialogue was real. Uh, the violence was real. But for the day-to-day sort of ebb and flow of organized crime, I think The Sopranos is the best. You know, that's what I think. I could be wrong. Uh, I feel like you're, I, I try to be, I just try to be Scott Bernstein. Well, it's funny because Scott Bernstein platform Gunner Lindblom. How many times I counted 12 articles where he called him a Detroit wise guy, an associate, a former wise guy. And now all of a sudden, since he's allegedly working in Hollywood with 50 cent that now he wants to come out and say Gunner's a liar. I mean, that to me, that's just a little bullshit. Like you platform this guy, you backed up his stories Uh, and now all of a sudden you're putting your tail between your legs and and you're blaming, you know, you're saying that that you never platformed any of his mob shit when you did like, it's just be up, be straight. Just, you know, all you ever had to say, honest to God was, you know what? I backed the guy. I should have done more research. That's my fault. He would get a lot further with people. If he said that versus going on a show and lying, you know what I mean? Wayne Newton on a show with Boston. I would love to talk to Wayne Newton. Are you kidding me? Wayne Newton would be a fun conversation. Wayne Newton and I know know the set. What uh, w- there's we have a mutual friend. Uh, but yeah, Wayne Newton would be fantastic. But see, you know the problem with that Jimmy is that Andy would want to sing uh, Don Shane with him. I'm serious. Andy, when he gets drunk, thinks he's Frank Sinatra, and he's not Frank Sinatra. <laughs> There was a dance. Uh, there was a dance we went to. When we was kids, and somehow this fuck—I don't know how he did it—but he got the microphone and was singing. What was it? it was it? Uh, it was the theme, New York, New York. It was like "Strangers in the Night," and I hear this god awful sound coming from the other room. I walk in, everybody's laughing, and there's Andy. Andy somehow snuck in a fucking flask of bourbon and is like drinking and belting out fucking Frank Sinatra, and it was horrible, but it was funny. It was funny. Yeah, I haven't heard from them in a couple of days. Um, they may be vacationing today. I know they're kind of staying out of the chats a little bit, uh, but I haven't heard from them. I think I heard from them earlier this week. So if they weren't busy, they would be in here. I love the Smiths. Aha. It, it, see, that was Mustache Pete. That's the way I felt. So the other night I turned it on. I'm watching. I'm like, Jesus Christ, would this thing hurry up already? And then once it got through the middle, It started getting better and better and better and better and better, but it took forever to get going, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I actually felt bad for her. You know what I mean? Uh, I've communicated here with Linda Kennedy Bodden, Dr. Michael Bodden's pathologist, wife that helped Kennedy all the time. Wow. Now, see, that's impressive. Now, that's impressive because my high school government thesis was the Warren Commission and the cover-up of the murder of JFK. That was my government uh, year-long thing. Michael Bodden, smart man, interview him. Yeah, Michael Bodden, I've always thought he was a smart cookie. Uh, let's see. I think the Gambino history shows and the Roy DeMeo Crow show, uh, Roy DeMeo Crew shows were the best. I learned the most, and I feel were the most interesting. The one that I think out of everything I've ever done, I think the Lucchese crime family one is the one where I learned the most. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Boardwalk guy says, I like the eighties documentary crime incorporated in the movie dinner, dinner rush. Uh, Look up Michael Bodden's books. I might just do that. I saw the Smiths. Yeah, I, I have I heard from them, I think, thir- Friday afternoon. I talked to um, Donnie and Dana. I talked to them both on Friday. So, you know, I don't know what's going on with them. Maybe they're a little busy. Uh, I would love to hear something. Uh, <laughs> no, see, see, Gianni, this is where you got to, you don't know me well, but one of the things I, what I do is, like with the, the, the Genovese, I start with the Morellos. I go all the way back to the 1800s and I stop like, you know, five years after Gotti, I, I stop way off before I even get remotely close. 
Oh, all of these people. Uh, back in okay. Yes, I understand. Oh, geez. Uh, let's see. Danny Green. Yeah, Danny Green was a tough guy. Can't can't ignore that guy's moxie. Uh, did Nixon have any organized crime contact? I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. I know he did. You know, I think everybody in government does for the for the uh, for the most part. Is uh, is Gunsmoke still in here, or is Jesse Roth still in here? If so, can you do me a solid and find out if FBS is coming on like at nine or something or nine fifteen? Since YouTube is not my thing, I kind of try to look out for other content creators. Um, you know, and I, I didn't want to come on here and get into an, a major a major thing because today's my fucking day off, believe it or not. Uh, let's see. What's up everywhere? Good to hear MTR again. Yo, what's up? Rism? Yeah, do you, Jesse, do you know if... Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. See, that's perfect. That works out perfect. Can you do me a favor, Gunsmoke, since I don't have time to reach down to my phone? Can you let uh, FBS know I appreciate uh, giving me a little time? I appreciate it. I'm driving. Oh, well, then I guess sign language won't fucking work. All right. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me, let me just... Okay. All right. Well, then I'll get out of here at nine. It'll be an hour and a half. That's enough. But we are going to do another one of these this week, guys. Probably on, you guys tell me what day do you want to do it? You want to do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? You guys let me know what uh, what day you want to do it. Because I feel like if we if we do this ahead of time, then I can prepare a little something special. Frank Costello. No, that's a joke. Uh, his closest? Oof, well, it depends because he was tight with the Rockefellers. He was tight with a lot of different fucking people. Uh, but I think, honestly, I, I think it would have been Lucky Luciano, uh, to be honest with you, because a lot of that had to do with the rum running and the drug smuggling and some other things like that. But I don't want to give all that away, Harry. You're always trying to get me to give it all away. Western Missouri. All right. My father went to Missouri. The Mizzou Tigers. Oh. Wednesday. Jesse says Wednesday. What do you guys say? Do you guys want Wednesday for another show where I can at least uh, get some, some, some material together? Because there's something I really, really want to fucking talk about. But I don't, I, I've talked about it on my podcast a little bit, but so I, I don't know if I should talk about this or not, because I think I have my friend listening. I don't want to upset him. I guess it's going to be, okay. So Stacy says Wednesday, uh, Chardonnay says any uh, night is good for me. The one you did about the female Italian bosses was good also. Yeah. So what are the things we're going to do? Like for those of you that are a paid member of the podcast, and I will just show you that link really quick. Um, that is it. Mob talk radio show dot supercast com. Now for anybody who's joined that it's $7 a month. I do four shows, five shows a month. Uh, there's probably like 60, 70 shows over there already. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so here's one of the things that we're going to do. If anybody, if any one of you are a member of the podcast and have joined the YouTube membership, if you have joined the YouTube membership, you will never pay seven over seven dollars for the podcast ever again. Uh, because come October, we're going to raise it to nine fifty, and that'll be the max it ever goes. Uh, and it's going to include in documentaries and a whole bunch of other stuff. But here's the thing: so some of the episodes that we have done on the podcast are over a year old. Okay. Uh, so we're going to release a couple of those, like the Catone show, like the, the, the Gambino series. We're just going to release them because what we're trying to do is, is bring people over. Plus, I think nobody else is really doing that. I don't think there's any other podcaster who has done all five families from beginning to end. You tell me one guy that's done it. You tell me one person. I'm the only one. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to release a couple of things. The six-part Genovese crime family is over there right now. It's over six hours. Over six hours. The Lucchese's were nine episodes. So that's going to be like uh, close to close to 12 or 13 hours. 
I just go from A to Z and we talk about everybody, not the big names. We talk about the small names. We talk about the politics. We talk about the unions. We talk about the government. We talk about everything. Everything. Um, so, yeah, definitely Wednesday. Let me write that down. All right. So, and that's the thing. Uh, for anybody that is curious about our podcast, uh, it is very, very, not very similar to what we're doing right here. Uh, basically, we, we have the same format every week. We have news and notes, what's going on in the organized crime world. If I'm pissed off about something in life or organized crime wise, I'll talk about that. If I'm talking about the Philadelphia indictment and my friends down there and what they're going through, I'll talk about that. Uh, sometimes we do a segment called scumbag of the week where we dog somebody out for whatever. Uh, then we will do a Q&A. And you can find the Q&A over on Facebook. If you go to our Facebook page, Mob Talk Radio, you'll see the, the section. It'll say Q&A and go. That's your opportunity to ask any question you want. And then we come back on that Friday and we answer them on the show. And then we get to the bulkier, bulkier part of the show. Last week, we did the whole entire entomology of the mafia. We started in 1100 AD and went all the way to the 1900s. It's insane. A lot of people love that show. Uh, we also did a series called Being the Boss. It's a great series, too. Uh, and I think we are going to release that one on YouTube. I just got to figure out what I'm going to release and what I'm not, because I still want to leave uh, a lot of the meaty stuff on the paid uh, platform. Jesse Roth, Jeff's podcast is awesome. I think it is. I work my ass off. That's why I get, you know what? I'll be honest with you, Jesse, like, and I don't mean this in a negative way. So please, anybody that calls their show, this don't get mad at me. Anybody that calls their show a podcast, you're not a podcast. What I do is a podcast two and a half hours, five times a month is a podcast. I talk on a microphone. I have a mixer. That's a podcast. What you do is a vlog V L O G, not a podcast. I say you release after each podcast, like the day after. Well, if I do that, then the people that are joining are saying, well, what am I getting? And 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 you have a good point, Boardwalk Guy, uh, because people are getting access to like all my early stuff. Like people have like 65 episodes they can go and listen to. I have another hundred and whatever on YouTube. So what I'm probably honestly going to do, I think the fairest way to do it is uh, I'm probably going to release the, the, the whole entire uh, uh, five families thing. And then I'm going to start picking who and what um boston p yeah um i'm gonna start releasing stuff slowly at least everything that we did last year like the first year that we went to a paid format i'm gonna release all of that shit that's gonna be released different segments not the whole entire show because i'm not gonna give away the whole entire show because there's other segments where i go absolutely fucking crazy and and tell stories and and, and everything else um Biggest scumbag syndicate, syndicate, the government. Yep, I agree. Uh, can't be wrong. You are harsh with the wrench. I have no idea what that's all about. Oh, well, with a name like that, you should be in a room that's called Cockfest. Goodbye. See, the problem is, guys, I can't see who's blocked and who isn't. A YouTube cast. Yeah, there you go. But it's definitely not a podcast. Listen, I got $4,500 worth of podcasting equipment. <laughs> so it's like when I hear, well, welcome to our podcast. It's like not a podcast, dude. It's like not a podcast. Oh, God. Oh, I don't care whether people are bored or not. Let them go sit on a show with 2,000 people where somebody complains all fucking for two hours. Like, really? I could sit here and do that. Or I, you could go to another show where there's 500 and somebody's screaming obscenities. Like, it's so stupid. If you don't like it, don't come. That's all. That's it. It's as simple as that. You don't like my show, don't listen. But at least I don't sit here and cry and complain for two hours. Or I don't scream at the top of my lungs and threaten to call the police on everybody. Like, that's not what I do. You know, I do my own thing. I do my own thing. Bob uh, Talk Radio Troublemaking. Well, yeah, I knew they would come in. I mean, anybody, you know, listen, 
I'm friends with FBS. They don't like it. So the only way that they can react is like a five-year-old. And that's what they do. Like, it's funny because like just like two weeks ago, I hadn't said anything. Immediately, I start getting attacked and threatened from that other side. And I've, I had done nothing to anybody. That's just the way that they all are. It's unfortunate, but it is. And I don't blame, listen, I don't blame the content creators for that. I don't blame the content creators for that. But when you, like I said before, but when you don't speak out against it and tell them not to do it, then you're surreptitiously saying, go ahead. You know, one of the channels has got more trolls in there than actual people. I couldn't believe it. You know, and listen, if I'm not entertaining, I apologize, but I didn't plan anything tonight. I got to be off of here at a reasonable time because uh, there's other people that are coming on with things that they want to say. Um, yeah, being the boss is one of my favorite ones. One of my favorite ones. Absolutely. You know, I'm really, I got to, I got to hand it to my chat. Like, I really thought that it was going to be a lot uglier than this. But I'm surprised it, I, I'm surprised it isn't. I'm surprised it isn't. I'm surprised. Totally, totally, totally surprised. Because that seems to be the norm. It's amazing. I, I went on uh, Lee Cole's show to address one thing, and I was getting attacked like crazy in his chat for no other reason than, you know, uh, I guess, you know, people just, are hateful and shit you know want to blame everybody for everything it's funny they want to blame everybody for everything except for the fucking person who did it to themselves i will never understand that logic i will never understand that logic uh oof. i'm trying to I, I i'm trying to um oh wrong thing i meant to i'm trying to think of a, a dad story trying to think i've told so many i told a whole oh god you, you guys you guys should hear the story i told the other day on the podcast that two made guys is hanging out with two made guys and they took me to a rave club you know the places that play the music where it's like dooch, dooch, dooch. i don't like them places to begin with i've bare I've, i think i've only been to two my whole entire life but two made guys took me there and the whole entire reason why they took me there was under a ruse that one of them knew the DJ wanted to say hi, show respect, whatever. But no, it was to make me as uncomfortable as fucking possible. <laughs> That's a hilarious story. Uh, but as far as my father, I, you know, I've told so many stories. I don't know. Oh, no, absolutely. There's, I mean, listen, there's good people in every room. I think there's good people in, in every room. I just think that sometimes, um, you know, I just think sometimes people lose sight of really what's in, of what's important. At the end of the day, fighting everybody else's problems isn't important, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to stand by my friends. And if they don't like me because of it, then that's their choice. But I'm going to stand by my friends. But it's amazing to me that if I stand by my friends, I'm a piece of horrible shit, but they do it. Oh, doesn't affect them. They, you know, the moniker doesn't fall to them. There's different rules for different sides. And that's why I just don't want to be around it. It's just, um, it's called rat logic. Well, yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And for the most part, uh, everybody that we have that comes in here, we get four or five a night that are douchebags, but that's about it. Uh, at least you can get on shows. I'm blocked everywhere. No, I'm blocked. I was blocked everywhere too. pounding blocked everywhere. It's funny to me because, uh, there, I guess there was an issue where Joe Baith said a bunch of nasty stuff. This was months ago, so please don't like run with this. But Joe Baith had ran his mouth about me, so I was going to go on the show and say something, and they wouldn't bring me on. He's like, oh, what's he going to do? Come on here and curse at me? I don't want to put up with that. Well, then don't say things that aren't true. Like, it's as simple as that, really. Like, Lee, <laughs> poor Lee. Lee used to look like a deer with his with, with the headlights when I would show up on his show. He would go, uh-oh. <laughs> Because if I'm coming on your show, there's usually because it's it's there's a problem. I'm going to address it. But uh, I got to say, you know, as, as much as Lee and I uh, disagree on a lot of things, you know, uh, he's he's at least doing a show. He's he's trying his best, you know, and you can't fault somebody for trying their best. You certainly can't. Did the mob protect people like Dillinger? That's a really good question. I I don't think so. I think it was just a mutually sort of beneficial kind of relationship. 
Now, all, all gangsters and criminals kind of, you know, hung out around them. No, absolutely not. No, 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 no. I was not living in New York in 1997. Uh, trolls are the people p- trolls are here to steal, steal people's time the best thing is to ignore them uh, they hate that more than anything you also can't win an argument with someone that's only out no I agree that's a, that's a lot of mistake that I think we all make can't argue with a pinhead and you, you can't tell people what's best for them if they can't see it for themselves you know what I mean I think a lot of times I think people try to look out for one another and stuff like that but sometimes you kind of just got to say you know what if I say something it's just going to create static let me just sit back let it happen naturally you know, and just stay out of it. And that's what I've done. Uh, even if, even if, and, and I'll give you a good example, even if one of these people that I may not be getting along with right now wanted to come on my show, I will let them on. Maybe probably, well, maybe not, but I, I, there's no reason for me to fight with anybody. I do mob content. This is my show. If, if, if you go back to, to when I started seven years ago, the stuff you're seeing right now, I was the king of that shit too. Ain't nobody could tear up nobody like me. But I'm glad there's I'm glad there's other people doing it because it enables me to kind of step back and it's almost like looking in the mirror seven years ago, you know. But I I do hope. Uh, I mean, look, Gunsmoke does some great stuff. I love the way he edits videos. I mean, he's phenomenal uh, how he edits the videos. FBS has a great interview style. Uh, I thought it was a great interview. He asks questions. It's like um, what are the words I'm looking for? It's uh, oh God, I can't think of the word. It's not 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 like boring or nothing like that, but it's like it's intriguing because he has good actors on there who have done enough interviews where they know how to kind of get out what they want to get out. And there's no lull, whereas some other people have people on their show and I like fall asleep four seconds into it. You know what I mean? Uh, I like you and I like Angel. I don't watch trolls. It's unfortunate they affects the 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 affect things the way they have. You've always been a gentleman to me, and I enjoy the show. I think you're a good dude. Well, here's the thing, right? So this is this is how I'm going to say this. Whatever is going on behind the scenes is between those people. It's not for public consumption unless you choose to make it that way. Uh, I certainly have my opinion on things. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? Like, Johnny, I don't think you give a shit what I think. You're just here to have a good time. You could care less what the bullshit is. Uh, And that's sort of the way that I kind of have to look at it. And listen, I I don't mind that you like Angel. I have no no problem with anybody that likes Angel. Uh, That's your prerogative, and, and everybody has a right to do that. What I don't like is how the people over there come and talk shit to me. But yet I would never go over there and do that. That's just kind of not the way. I don't even go over there in general, but. That's just how I kind of do things. And if I ever caught anybody from my, and and I'm going to say this with God's honesty and truth, not a single one of these people that come to my show have ever gone to another show and talk shit to somebody else. And I know because I know everybody's names that come in constantly. And I look, I've never seen any of you do it. So I've got the only show where I don't have trolls going and, and, and messing with other people. And I appreciate that more than you'll ever understand. Absolutely. You can disagree and be civil or you can disagree and just never speak again. Sometimes that's the best way of being civil. They don't fucking exist. And that's just the truth. And, you know, to to hear somebody say that is disgusting and it's uh, selfish and it's uh, it's self uh, attributed uh, because I think people sometimes forget that, uh, it you know what, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Like I always said, sometimes the best way to help somebody is step the fuck out of the way. That's it. I refuse to argue with drunk people and idiots. Nope, me too. Lesson I've learned in my old age. Nope, you cannot. It's not your monkeys and not your circus. And that's the truth. But I will stand by my friends. A hundred percent. Good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, my the wife used to love your motherfucking the world on your own podcast. Well, every once in a while, Jimmy, I have I have a little bit of that. I have a little bit of that. And, and if you ever wanted to get to know me behind all of this, I think the podcast is the best way. I talk about personal stuff, real personal stuff. Uh, I, it's so it's not just very one dimensional. You know, hey, this guy killed this guy and that and the third. Um, some of us actor age. No, yeah, absolutely. And and I think also too a, a big thing, Gianni, that is is truthful is if you know who you are right on the inside doesn't matter what the fuck anybody says 
You know what I mean? If you know who you are, whatever. You know, you just got to let it go. Uh, somebody who is going to troll you, somebody who's going to call you names is is got to be a pretty miserable person. Those are the people you pray for, believe it or not, because those are the ones that need the help. Because they actually think that by saying horrible, despicable shit to you that they're getting somewhere. It just <laughs> doesn't work. It doesn't work. Gianni Catalano. My godfather's name was Catalano. Oh, I know a Catalano myself, but it, I don't think they're related to Gianni. All right, so we're going to finish. We're going to go about 15 more minutes, get off here about 9 o'clock. We are going to come back here on definitely on Wednesday, uh, and I'm going to have a show prepared. We're going to talk about some indictment stuff, and we're going to talk about this weird sentencing guideline that, <laughs> just as a reference point, how can somebody, so there's what they call an offense level, and then there's a criminal history category, right? Anytime yeah, they give you points when you get crimes and that determines how much time you're going to do in state federal prison. But what's very interesting to me is there's four zones. There's zone A, B, C, and D. Now, somebody who's never been in jail in their life shouldn't have any of the prerequisites. So they're going to probably fall under the category one, okay, which is zero or one, which means they really don't have a criminal past at all. But what's interesting is the offense levels. And I want to talk about the offense levels on Wednesday because – it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it's just ridiculous how they come up with these numbers. And it's always funny to watch how a judge reduces these numbers. So, you know, it is what it is. But we're going to talk about that on Wednesday because I wanted to bring up a, a real good, good point about, you know, when you talk about applying a Rule 14 uh, in federal court to get yourself severed from another defendant, why you would want to do that. It's really important that we talk about that because there's been some shit that, that I just can't believe is going on. Uh, let's see. Fantastic. Sounds great. Miss can't be wrong. Are you doing all right? I haven't been in a lot of chats. Um, cause usually I gotta be honest with you. When I watch fat ball to Celine, I'm usually playing Xbox. <laughs> I turn them on Xbox and I play my hockey game or whatever. And I just listen to them talk and then I'll type in, Hey, how you doing? I'm here. Blah, blah, blah. I just don't like to sit in chats. It's just kind of not my thing. I'm kind of over chats. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, what's the worst chat room you've ever been? And I said, Angel Gotti's. That's the worst chat I've ever been in. Like that, at least, at least in the end, like that was the one, that was the most, um, I don't know the right word. That, would, that was the filthiest chat I've ever seen. Um, you know, other than like some of MRE's chats at times, but she like, just has some real winners in there. And I'm not talking about the people that support her. I'm talking about like the haters that come in there to try to run their mouths at her and, and say other things about other people. Like it was one of the most disgusting chats I'd ever seen in my life. Gunsmoke the Don. Oh, Gunny, I forgot to get your, your, uh, your location to send you that thing. I meant to, I meant to, I, I forgot all about that. I'm sorry. I'll get it from you later. Uh, Johnny the Greek from London uh, listened to uh, MTR since 2014 hasn't changed his standards or morals. No flip flopping. And that's 100%. No. And that's the truth. They're all calling me a flip flopper. That's what they call me now. Oh, he's a flip flopper. Uh, what have I flipped on? What have I flopped on? The only thing I'm flipping and flopping on is the beach in my bed. And that's about it. And occasionally the swimming pool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a seal. Ar, 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 ar. Uh, no, I, I don't flip flop on anything. I believe in what I believe in. And just because I'm friends with somebody does not mean I, here's the beauty of having a friend like FBS. Okay. I can disagree with a lot of things he does. He can disagree with a lot of the things I do, but we're still friends. But with other people, I couldn't be that way. It was either all in or you're out the door and I don't live my life that way. And I, and I won't live my life that way for fucking anybody. Uh, and that's just the reality of it. Uh, I have family in Philly as well as Brooklyn and Queens and Boston, Providence, Hartford, here in Springfield, as well as Italy. You're just all over the place, Gianni Catalano. You're welcome, buddy. You don't always have to get along with people, but there's like a respect where you don't say, well, it's going to be this way or it's, you know, forget about it. I don't, you know, I, I was like that when I was young. I'm not like that now. If somebody doesn't want me around, I can take a hint. See you later. I have 15,000 subs. What the fuck do I need with somebody with 500? Let's just be honest. I don't. I don't need you. You need me. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Hey, uh, I don't think that's real. Oh, wait, is this real? Can somebody check that out? I think that is Donnie. Haunted ghost tube. Well, glad to see your smiling faces. We were talking about you earlier in the show. Gunsmoke's been doxxed yet. Neither M to R or I can get his address. Oh, I know where he's at. Gunsmoke can't hide from me. I make one phone call. I can find out everything about where Gunsmoke lives. <laughs> he knows I'm just kidding. I could, but no, I'm not. Why do you want his address, Jesse? Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Hold on. No. Hold on a minute. <laughs> She's going to be really mad at me for doing this. Is this why you want his address? Hold on. I had to fucking do it. I'm sorry. She's she's gonna be all over my ass later. You ever do that again to me? Oh, jeez. Forget about it. Uh, there are people I don't agree with, but I don't mess with them. No, see, that's see, that's the whole point, right? So what I do is this. You don't have to like me. I don't have to like you. I just keep it moving. That's it. That's it. Unfortunately. Oh, wow. She's laughing. Okay. I thought I was in trouble. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So pounding. If you don't know what that was over on the post time podcast, we have a segment called the dirtiest fucking book you've ever heard of or whatever. And what we do is we found all of these adult erotica books that it just are really strange. And so that was the theme song for the segment here. I'll play it just so you guys can hear it. And now a new installment of how fucked up can one book be? So in the background, you're saying, okay, well, what the fuck am I listening to? Well, one of the reasons was, is there's a book called come for Bigfoot. Okay. And it's spelled the way you think it is. And it's all about this girl who goes on this wild adventure, falls in love with Bigfoot and has a relations uh, with Bigfoot. And there's like six of these books. And so before all of you say, oh, yeah, you were looking for them books, weren't you, Jeff? No, 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 it's not true. I stumbled across it looking for something else, believe it or not. But it's a segment over on Post Time Podcast. Uh, so <laughs> so that's 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 what that's that's what that's from. Uh, and, and that's just a segment we do. It's just a silly little segment. But we are going to be changing the format uh, of Post Time Podcast a little bit uh, just because I think we need to, to get outside the box a little bit and talk about some other things. Uh, yes. Relations with Bigfoot. Yes. A hundred percent. Gianni, if you go to post time podcast on YouTube, listen to, if somebody can drop the link for me, I would appreciate it. Uh, the post time podcast, drop the link to the YouTube channel, but you can also go on Facebook and type in post time podcast on our Facebook. And just when you think that it can't get freaky enough, uh, my my fiance sent me a photo of an entomology insect group where this girl is a lesbian and she's saying that she imagines when she's with her girlfriend that she's a giant cockroach or a bug and she imagines that her girlfriend's a bug in bed. It's the weirdest shit ever. I don't get it, but that's kind of the weird kind of shit that we talk about. It's funny. It's it's. I mean. <laughs> you found the Bigfoot crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, actually, it, listen, this doesn't have to do with Mob Talk Radio, but I'll, I'll tell you because I still have it. Uh, last week's books or the last episode that we did on Post Time Podcast, the books were historical books. And there was a book called Abraham Lincoln Fuck Machine <laughs> or Lord of the Fucks or something to that derivative. It was all about Abraham Lincoln, uh, who was trained in ninjutsu, but his real secret weapon was his ability to have sex and he was going to the moon and fighting aliens this is the type of shit that i would never read but what's hilarious about it is the reviews 
that is what we talk about because people review this shit like they've they've like read a fucking masterpiece like get going with the fucking wind then there was a book about some girl who goes to scotland and falls in love with Loch ness and Loch ness does filthy things to her it's it's just it's it's the storyline is funny to me and then it's like the reviews because people buy this shit and they review it and they take it seriously so there you go Oh, God. Nobody's ever going to talk about me. Yeah, Lord of the Fucks. I'm serious. Lord of the Fucks. Uh, and there was uh, there was, there was was two books. Uh, there was Abraham Lincoln Fuck Machine, and then there was Abraham Lincoln Lord of the Fucks. <laughs> Seriously, Gunsmoke the Don, drop the channel, click on the link, head on over there, and just listen to yourself. Listen for yourself. We tell a lot of funny stories. A lot of funny stories. Uh Let's see. Are they, oh, are they part of the Furby people? No, no, no. Well, I mean, I don't know. But apparently, see, here's the thing. Apparently, anybody can write these things. But it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't read the books. I read the log line of the synopsis of what the book is about. And then I go to the reviews. The reviews are fucking hilarious. And that's where I laugh. And you can tell because what I do is I read them to Andy. He has no idea what's coming for him. And I start reading and you can hear him gasping on the other end of the, 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 the line going, what the fuck are you reading me? And then Mandy and I tell funny stories. If you ever wanted to laugh, I'm telling you gun smoke. That's, that's the show for you to listen to when you get Johnny blaze at two o'clock in the morning. I'm serious. That's what you should be listening to. Are they picture books? No, they're just, um, they're, they're like erotica. That's disgusting. That's funny because I can trace that that person that just came in here. I can trace. Idiots. It's disgusting. Anyway. What's up, slug? We're not going to be here much longer. We're going to. Oh, look, this is the best that MREs people can do. Imagine that. I'm telling you, Gunsmoke, hit, hit smoke your blunt. And just turn on one of those shows. You, you'll lose your shit. You'll be like, damn, why wasn't I listening to this before? Uh, MTR, Jeff Nadu had a dink on his show that said he ran a big Chicago mob mafia gambling den. John Merges. Merges said he beat up Dick K. And to, yeah, I don't believe any of that. But then again, I don't know. I didn't see the show. I didn't see the show, but. Uh, nobody of, of any street value is going to go on a show unless they're an informant. That's the way I kind of see it. But then again, I didn't see the show, so I'm not really sure. The monkey women. Piss yourself laughing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody needs a little laughter, even though it's a little bit, uh, even though it's a little bit uh, it's sort of, I'm not going to say X rated, but it's definitely a hard R rating. You guys will love it. It's funny. I listen to it. You know what I mean? So, so what the plan is going to be, and listen, I appreciate all of you for sticking around. I, and we didn't really have a good show plan for today because I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but we're going to have a big plan uh, for Wednesday night. We are going to come back Wednesday night at 730. So be here Wednesday night at 730 and we're going to have our next show. All right. So I, I expect all 90 of you to be back. You understand what I'm saying? So do me a favor, sub to Gunsmoke the Don, sub to the Smith's Haunted Ghost Tube, sub to fat bald Sicilian sub to all of our friends. Uh, I wanted to thank all of the wrenches for doing what you do. I appreciate it. And please go listen to the post time podcast. I'm serious. You guys, you don't know what you're missing anyway. Uh, so I will see all of you back here on Wednesday at seven 30. I want to get off because I want to smoke a cigarette and I want to give fat bald Sicilian a little time to get on. So, I will see all of you on Wednesday.